Georgia so. And we are live. I mean, it is uh, it's rather uneventful. You want to go to the first Facebook tab there, and now that is behind us. You can angle that thing too, like so you're not looking at it all weird. Yeah. So, hi guys. Hi. <laughs> we are the. Pro- this is uh, podcast number forty-six. This is the Projangers and Wall Hangers. Radio network, and no, I still haven't learned to silence my cell phone. I don't even know where my cell phone is. Yet again. <sighs> but, yet again, here we are for another podcast. Uh, this is Pajangers and Wallhangers Radio Network uh, Triforce Podcast. I, of course, am one Matthew Bucarell, the Batman. To my right is Twitchy Wilson, one Mr. Kelly Collins, and to my left is Big Brother Stephen Bucarell. Of course, you all will well know that notice that uh, old man is he's no longer among us. He's at the beach. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to make it seem like he's dead. Yeah, no, he's dead to us, but no, he's at the beach. Um, but yeah, we welcome everybody for tuning in and he's at the beach. I'm yeah, sorry. somebody else who didn't learn how to silence the cell phones. <laughs> We're the sound club. <laughs> Do you want me to invite you to the podcast, Kelly? No, I'm okay. Feel, we can all feel one. I'm good. Okay. So, um, all for one and one for the podcast? Exactly. The Motley Musketeers. Title of the podcast. Hey, there you go. <laughs> they come quickly, giggity. <laughs> <laughs> they, come out, <laughs> they come out your mouth. <laughs> You're not too big. <laughs> so, we at the Triforce Podcast always come to you, Giggity Out. Of your mouth. <laughs> and, oh, God. Oh, we have a, a, a birthday, I see. Special birthday. To oh, Bob. special Waldhanger birthday. You see, well, over there. I don't know. Behind me, over there on the side. Watching. Yes. Bob Bucarell, cousin Bobbo, ultimate Waldhanger, a couple times out there. Bobbo is, uh, have, we want to wish him a happy birthday. He's always out there supporting us in the podcast, so. Hey, buddy. Happy birthday, Bob. Spend it well, Bob. And, uh, of course, minus that birthday. We always, we don't always start off with a birthday, but it's nice to. But we always start off with the nerdy news. The muck and the grit and the grime of uh, everything that is going on in our nerdy culture. So we want to start off with this story. Tom Holland. Of course, we have Spider-Man uh, Far From Home coming out tomorrow, July 2nd, which mm-hmm. Big Brother and I, of course, will be doing a spoiler alert, Far mm-hmm. From Home, soon. And uh, look out for that. We, uh, Tom Holland here, I think we're going to have him for a very long time. Um, he wants like to play, he said in an interview with Rotten Tomatoes, that honestly, I would play Spider-Man until I can't walk anymore. Okay. So, uh, I mean, it's not... Uh, it, I say he's not being imaginative enough. So what if he can't walk anymore? All right. What about Spectacular Spider-Man with Doc Ock, where Doc Ock has the fucking, you know, all the tentacles and stuff? You don't the have little, to walk then. <laughs> from the little I've seen of him, not an actual Spider-Man movie, but all the other stuff, mm-hmm. he seems like a pretty good Spider-Man. I'll get around to watching it at some point. Yeah, man, because it's definitely, he says, he goes on to continue to say that it's like a childhood dream to play the character. And who, is, who, who wouldn't it be? Who wouldn't want to be Spider-Man? Dream for. You know, because that's the, whole in, that's the whole vision of the mask, is that anybody could be. You could be Spider-Man. Even if you're a woman. Kind of be like uh, this Peter B. Parker from End of the Spider-Verse there. But, you know. Even, you could even be Spider-Man. and hang out with Thor. <laughs> if you're a woman. <laughs> Yeah, Spider Gwen. She is the uh, she was the first Spider Woman. So we go on to the next story, um, which is it's kind of cool. 
Now, as I always, I try. I've been trying these past couple podcasts to start off with the entertainment news, but this one is just tied directly to Spider Man, and it is Spider Man VR, Far From Home virtual reality experience, and the trailer's kind of cool. You see, it's how would that work? Web slinging? He like oh, because you have the joysticks around, in your hands. and he kind of. Hey, you have the joysticks in your hands. It'd be like... And scroll forward a little bit in the video here. Yeah, comfort sense of... Yeah, he's talking to Ned. And oh. then he goes off into... Uh, and then he goes off into the... There we go. Rooftop. So he's standing at the top of a rooftop. And then he'll... He's just talking to Ned saying, Oh my God, buddy, this is crazy, right? Oh, Spider-Man. So you see here with the two kind of... There you go, with the two kind of little joysticky things. There's one blue, one red. That's the left and right, I imagine. Okay. So he, that's where you're going to shoot for the building, shoot for the building. <laughs> Web slinging like a mother! That looks banging. I'm right, games, bitch! Boom! Right on, the, right on the window. Now, this has kind of bothered me, because it seems like he's going a bit slow. It does. He <laughs> stopped. Uh, <laughs> now, this kind of cool. All right, what are you going to do? He's going to pull all the rocks and shit off of him. So you have your baddie here. And for some reason, I imagine Green Goblin drones. Which, you know, cool kind of. All right. And then you have how much web is hey, the issue. What it reminds me of, you remember in the 80s when we went to the amusement park and they had the VR? Yeah. yeah. It's like they haven't updated it since then. It's like, <laughs> it looks exactly like that. You see the ray tracing on that, though? <laughs> Man. It reminds me of when you're playing Final Fantasy 7 and you get on the, uh, the ride and shoot shit. It's still pre alpha, <laughs> I will say this. I don't think it's like complete, but if you're going to give a Spider Man experience, like, you know, okay, this is at least a step in the right direction. It's not Superman 64 bad. I mean, well, it's bad, but it's not Superman 64 bad. But it has like a, you know, that's, you that's see, a really low bar. It really is. That's a really low bar. It's like if you're trying to high jump the table. I there. feel like looking at it, it's like some of the graphics are good. Like yeah. some of the detail is good and some of it's bad. Yeah. But the gameplay looks fun. It does look fun if they sped up the wall swing, uh, the yeah. web slinging, and they it's really. Because like look, everything. boom. He just switches new cartridges like that. And you have a lot of different things you could do if this was given to the right developer. Yeah. If you're going to really focus in the next gen into VR and cloud gaming and going off into that direction, <clears throat> we could po possibly Spider get, Man like, you know... Spider-Man spending way too much time on the ground. Exactly. Spider-Man, well, obviously, that's like when uh, the, I, I had my gripe about the E3 de uh, demo guys who were playing the game, and they absolutely fucking suck at their job. I feel like that's kind of this case right now. <laughs> that, you know... It, might not be, have been the best person to probably be Spidey. But it also may be a shit game. We'll hop over into the next story, which is uh, they they already announced that they're giving Tom Holland nine, count them, nine, this is in German, yeah, this is the right article, okay. um, nine Spider-Man films. Okay? That sounds like a lot. And in the text above right films? here, or films with Spider-Man in it. Spider-Man movies. We're getting nine of them. That's now, the crossover possibilities with this, especially with Tom Holland having no problem doing all nine. You could do Into the Spider-Verse. Obviously, Kevin Feige uh, said that he wants to see Tom Hardy's Venom go up against the webbed hero. Um, you have Spider-Man, Deadpool, and Wolverine as another possibility. So... That's, so, I like is that. it nine just Spider-Man movies called Spider-Man? What are we on? They're, Three, they're not four, five, specific, but they count Captain America. Movies with Spider-Man. They count movies. Captain America Civil War as a Spider-Man movie. They count Far From Home and Infinity War and Endgame. Okay. It's like Thor and uh, the Hulk. They count all the different stuff they're in as them being part of the movie. So that's nine movies with Tom Holland. Okay. Now, far from home being July second, I could see, I could see a lot of potential in the end scenes. That you know, if they go Sinister Six, or if they even just kind of give me like a, a end of the Spider Verse. Give me Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield and Tom Holland, and you know, probably like I'm thinking like maybe like Sigourney Weaver is like Madame Web, and you give me a good into the Spider Verse with them, dude, that'd be fantastic. 
That would be an awesome movie and a live action. I'd love to see some of that. And obviously, and my man crush right there, Mysterio, Jake Gyllenhaal. You you broke back Mountain with him, huh? I would. He's 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 a good looking guy. Yeah. He's a good looking guy. Always, my, my wife makes fun of him. He's like the biggest man crush. I have no idea who that is. Jake Gyllenhaal, Mysterio. Okay. Yeah, the guy who plays Mysterio. You were. Uh, if I saw him, I probably would. Uh, Jarhead. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, the yeah. main character. Yeah. Or, no. what was it? Yeah, the main character in Jarhead, and he was uh, also. Oh, okay. Ever Southpaw. since you walked in, this goddamn trailer won't show his fucking face. You notice that? <laughs> Ever since you walked in, and we're trying to show him who the fuck this is. It's not you can't see his face now. That, that, that. Wait there. Wait. Hang on. We'll pause it. Uh, it's a pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> On. You saw his fucking. Yeah, okay, I saw him. You know who we're talking about. That's why wait, we have wait, a damn wait, green screen. What's Patrick Stewart doing? Oh, no, ah, fuck mind. it, I'm done. Bathing in Let's the, go with your actual story. Bathing in the blood of virgin children. Would be yeah. like, that's how he stays so so keen. But they're saying Deadpool, Spider Man, Wolverine may be like a fifth or sixth movie, so it's going to be far out there because they got to have time to develop that. Now they are also and eyeing and, up. And find a Wolverine. Yeah, they're also <laughs> eyeing up. Doctor Doom, they're trying to slip in Doctor Doom as a big baddie in the next phase four, rumored. But this one, man, can't wait to see it because this is the official ending of the Infinity Saga, like we reported last week. So, next story is uh, kind of sad. It's uh, Josh Brolin. He's calling and nobody's answering over at Disney and Marvel. He's wondering what is going on with Cable's future. Pun intended, I guess. So, essentially, uh, Brolin was at the uh, Ace Comic-Con in Seattle, and a fan asked Brolin if uh, dual, like, kind of dual characters could be in the MCU after the Fox purchase, and his response was kind of classy, which you scroll down and you see it. It's, uh, he says, wait, Disney bought Fox? <laughs> <laughs> And he goes Replied on. Replied as a joke. Yeah, so as a joke. He, he does know they bought it. But, man, you got to say that he's saying that pretty much it's, it's a big universe getting even bigger. So you have to be able to fit in everybody. They're not <laughs> yeah. giving up on an X-Force movie or a Deadpool 3 movie. But I see them moving in the kind of right direction. And Brolin was a good cable. He did that. <laughs> he was a good cable. I think he did a For good job. For as old job. as he is, he's still fucking jacked. Like, oh, yeah. Uh, he, I think he did a good job. And, and I mean, minus the C, the one CGI hand thing that was like a, yeah. the uh, the gimmick trailer, with like Deadpool going off on Brolin's green hand. Mm. It was fun. But Brolin, you do good things, man. We can't wait to see you. Another story I have sounds like a uh, ripoff here, uh, a direct ripoff of Home Alone. Ryan Reynolds is to produce and star in Stoned Alone. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Deadpool star is uh, reimagining Home Alone, with, <laughs> where if, if instead you have uh, Macaulay Culkin, the eight-year-old boy who's been left alone, it's the twenty-something man who missed the family holiday, gets really stoned and paranoid, and then. He try he he finds out there are thieves breaking into his house, and he has to try to get them out. They have these things now. They're called phones, and you dial in America nine one one, and then these people with guns will show up and protect you. Yeah. Well, <sighs> I, I might be over analyzing this, a bit, but. A bit, a bit. Uh, <laughs> But it's got some. It's got Ryan Reynolds in it. It's got uh, what is that? Kevin Barrows and Matt Midler, the pair behind Netflix's huh. original comedy, the the package. So, so next year, if it came out, it would be the 30 year anniversary. Of <laughs> Home Alone. Wow. So, yeah. Oh man, Gully yeah, Culkin yeah. definitely. He felt every single one of those 30 years. <laughs> if you look at his face, that is every single one of them years on there. The next story, I'll tell you what. This guy probably felt none of the fucking years on him. Paul fucking Rudd. Because this man is 50 and he looks like he's fucking 20. Swear, well, not 20. Maybe like a 25, 30 range. He does look good. And Paul Rudd, go down here a bit because you actually see right here. He, uh, If you don't know, there's a little movie 
that Jason Reitman is making called Ghostbusters. If and, you were born uh, yesterday. Yeah. Hook and ladder, they show the building here, mm -hmm. and you see people obviously in New York, they're going to absolutely flood over these. Uh, iconic landmarks like this. Even when mom and dad went to New York, they went and saw the Ghostbusters building, and they, uh, they saw the hotel where Dana. I will tell you, I was playing Spider-Man the other day. I I kind of stopped by there. And, oh, yeah. Hey, it's the Ghostbusters building. Link. <laughs> Link was not impressed. And I would see Paul Rudd, and he's pretty much saying how, you know, once he heard that Jason Reitman was making a Ghostbusters movie, he was absolutely, you know. 100% on with it, and uh, he also said that he he slimed himself quite a bit. He slimed that, himself when he heard is out that Jason Reitman. Did he slime was himself out of his mouth? <laughs> he didn't mention where he slimed himself. <laughs> he actually said that he's sliming himself right now. <coughs> so yeah, he's going to be in the Ghostbusters movie, man. There's a couple other people that are going to announce to be in it. Finn Wolfhard, which was Mike Wheeler from Stranger Things, yeah. and. Uh, McKenna Grace, who was young Carol Danvers in Captain Marvel. They're both going to be involved in uh, Jason Reitman's Ghostbusters telling. Mm. So, that oh. could be good. Barrett. Okay, never mind. Yeah, that's Shang-Chi. We're not talking about Shang-Chi. That's yeah. rumors. you got to ignore, ignore some of the stories that you find <laughs> on comicbook.com because not all of them are 100%, which I will, you will find out, I found out, later. Everything DC. Everything DC coming to Titans Season 2, man. And you scroll down here, they go through everything you see here, man. Obviously, you have all the main four characters of Nightwing, Beast Boy, Starfire, and Raven coming back. Uh -oh. Now, one thing that was alluded to uh -oh. at the end of last season was, uh, keep going down here, Batman. We saw... The, only the back of Batman at the end of last season, and I'm not going to spoil how it ended, but it was on a cliffhanger. So the Batman they have coming is one that everybody will remember from one, from one Game of Thrones, which is one Jorah Mormont's uh, Mr. Ian Glenn. Who was that? Jorah Mormont, the guy with the grayscale. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's going to be Batman. I think he'd do a good job too. He doesn't have names. You got to tell him people and what they what happened yeah. to them. You know, name. I, I've only got so much room. The guy that was in love with, uh, what's her face, but the uh, dragon queen. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I was gonna say her name, Daenerys. but then I realized I have to say the name. Yeah. Dragon queen. Dragon. She went in. She totally looks like Mother a different dragons. person Mother with the, her natural uh, hair. Breaker of the chains or breaker of the unchained. Mother of the Sully. Anyway, she has a lot of names like me. So, uh, Ian Glenn, that could be good. Jason Todd's coming back. His Robin was really good because the Jason Todd, if you don't know, spoiler alert, in the comics, he becomes Red Hood. And he yeah. really has that dark Robin in him, which if Titans keeps going, he could become Red Hood, which could be awesome. Yeah. Um, if you're an Arkham fan, that's uh, Arkham Knight. Got a comment there. Yeah, that's just Chris. She, Chris is checking in here from Ocean City, Maryland. The old man is, like I said, I may have alluded to you being dead. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. You so be just careful the with those uh, jellyfish. Yeah. <laughs> we already have the insurance claim filed. Um, so, Jorah Mormont, Batman, and then also you have Hawk and Dove coming back. Hawk is the guy, if you've ever seen, um, uh, what was that college fucking show uh, with uh, the show? Blue Mountain State. Yes, that show is he so was ch funny. Uh, Chad on Blue Mountain that State. Show is That's who so they have as Hawk, and wow. it was he. He does a good job as Hawk, and Hawk and Dove are coming back, man. I'm really happy to see how they were portrayed there. And this guy, Superboy, and Crypto coming. Pretty much nobody's heard of Superboy, but his name's Joshua Orphan. Okay, he was in. The, he's an upcoming actor. He hasn't had any real kind of big roles. They've all been like small movie roles or short films. He's got so, a bowl cut, so this is a big he's kind of be a teeny, a teeny bopper person lover, you know. And Crypto, that's just a dog, you know, super dog yeah. from Krypton, so you can't go wrong with that. Mm -hmm. But uh, Wonder Girl coming back, she was uh, she was actually a pretty cool. Con uh, Connor Leslie, um, Wonder Girl, I the love actual, yeah, oh yeah, mm -hmm. especially since all the major superheroes got sidekicks. Wonder Girl, Kid Flash, Superboy, Superboy. Robin, obviously Hulk. <laughs> 
Keep going. Yeah. Busy. But um, you have Wonder Girl. You keep going down here. You also see Aqualad, Aqualad. as opposed to Aquaman. Yeah, <laughs> Aqualad. All the sidekicks, man. They were the Titans. That was a, the whole point of the fucking comic. The sidekicks get together and they save the day. Yeah. But Drew Van Harker. And he's from Pretty Little Liars as well as. What else did he do? At least if you're watching, that was the show that we loved. Castle. Out. He was on Castle. <laughs> I watched Pretty Little Liars. She made me. I like that. Hey, sweet show. So. You have Mercy Graves, which you remember her from the 2014 Christmas special of Doctor Who. She played Ashley. Um, I'd have to show you the episode. I honestly. So probably don't know. when I see the episode, I remember. And then this guy. That's true. You have seen him everywhere. Yes, Isaiah been Morales. It's been a lot. He was in NCIS, Los Angeles, Law and Order, SVU. He's been in Jericho. Chicago PD. NYPD Blue. He's been in everything, and he's going to be your Slave Wilson man, as well as this guy. Bringing in the Deathstroke family, so you have Jericho Ravager, uh, Jericho and Ravager. This guy is. Uh, Is he a bad guy? Yeah, he's part of the Deathstroke family. And you have uh, uh, who is that? Joseph Wilson uh, is Chelman. Okay. Chelman, that's his name. Not that not his name, not Chell Man, like he's a superhero. Chella Man. Chella Man is the guy's name who's been cast for that role of Joseph Wilson. As you see is above Chella Man, a, that's from another character. That's his actual name. Okay. Yeah. So that's what you see coming in the net, to the net uh, to the Titans rather. Next we have the Netflix. <laughs> of course, we see Witcher. Are they gonna get Are movies. they gonna cancel another show on Amazon? Like, like a 70 year old's <laughs> prostate Witcher has been leaking some stuff here which we see down here the poster worst monster is are the ones we create you see the official Netflix with their logo and everything and then fans are really clamoring about Henry Cavill's ass in that shot um, um okay only one sword though if you do notice and if you've ever played Witcher he has one sword had a, and one ass one sword for killing one? One sword for killing demons. The other one's for humans. We is only see the one for, have for humans. Seven asses or something? What is your problem? No, only one ass, but he. D <laughs> well, <clears throat> two cheeks. Does really, he have a, a crack in it. Seven asses? Did I miss something? But uh, you see here in the shots here, it's looking the costume design wise and everything, it's looking really good. Uh, I don't know what you did. There you go. And then you see Cannibal in a full shot as well as. Okay. Um, Straight out of like a Dwayne the Rock Johnson kind of look there. They have the contacts in there, making it look like Geralt. He's got an intense stare. I think that the whole look of it is looking good. So if they have a really good story with this, I think this could be a really solid hit for Netflix because they're losing everything Disney. They're not really getting anything, you know, back. It's they're, a good direction to go. It's they have the Mark they, Miller stuff. It is a good direction to go if they do it right. Yeah, and it looks like from these shots, you can't really tell much. It's a couple screenshots and a poster. Give me a good trailer, not just a teaser of him walking through and shit, but no scar, one sword, and one ass. Title of the podcast. <laughs> but yeah. definitely something for them to keep going on there. Um, obviously, fans reacting to the latest images in The Witcher, and uh, this one has a good comment to it, I believe. Henry Cavill clearly took smoldering intensity lessons from At The Rock for which <laughs> <laughs> that, so that one I kind of thought was funny but you see the comparison here in that one from Geralt from the game and that guy so you know eh, I, I kind of I like I like okay. the look of it I like the way, what they're going with it I think that Henry Cavill he did a good job as, mu as mustache <laughs> what you can't see yet is Henry Cavill's mustache <laughs> <laughs> uh, hopefully they have better CGI but um, <laughs> that's just, it's just, the comments are always funny when something hits the internet. Well, fuck me sideways if this doesn't look amazing. <laughs> it's just a poster. <laughs> like, but God, God damn. damn. <laughs> okay, getting hyped now. The Witcher. I know, I thought the same thing. It's only a fucking poster. But what do people <laughs> see Henry Cavill's ass? <laughs> Gerald is <Gerald> thick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, the internet loves Henry Cavill's ass. And they love his ass as Geralt in The Witcher, apparently, so far. <laughs> First few feelings in The Witcher are here. I'm disappointed that they're focused on Henry Cavill's ass instead of showing me what I really want to see. 
the precise quality of his platinum blonde wig. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but that's one I'm definitely looking out for. As well as this next one. Yeah. The producers of this Netflix Witcher series. <laughs> They're making Final Fantasy. Now, we have to make sure we get this right because Amy might be watching. Amy 14. It's Final Fantasy 14 live action series. Now, don't get your panties this in the one? bunch just yet. Is this the one with the floating city that you no. fly around? You keep oh, saying that because so that's the only stupid. one you remember. It's the only one eight. I remember, and it's the dumbest. Yeah. Don't that's get me started. Still not live cool. Chocoboo, but. or live action Chocoboos. Yeah, they're getting the Chocoboos and Sid coming to the live action. There's no word on a release date yet. I, I, I wish that this was gameplay. Freaking. Uh, and there's no home for this yet, but the producers are trying to get it made. They don't have a home, they don't have any kind of release for it. You see, this game came out in 2013, Final Fantasy XIV, and they're still releasing stuff like Shadowbringer to that game. So fans are obviously crazy for it, and yes, we know about <laughs> her hard nipples. <laughs> Stranger Things coming next Thursday. Um, Amy is excited about it. Yeah, uh, Final Fantasy XIV. It's coming as uh, Sony announced their partnership with Square Enix and Hive Mind Productions. The live-action TV series is based off of Final Fantasy XIV. Will tell an original story in the game's world. I'm gonna butcher the crap out of this. No. What did we agree on? Wait, where is that? Right there. Orenza? No. Orenzia? Yorzia. Yorzia? Yorzia. Mysia. Let's call the whole thing off. Uh, yeah. <laughs> However the fuck you say it, it's that world. Eorzea. Eor. It's very depressed and so. Ask Amy. Fun. She's all about Final Fantasy XIV. Maybe she knows. No confirmation on the director or actors or anybody who's actually involved in it. All we have is a fart and a hope and a prayer. Huh? So let's just give them some time to let it sit and let it move on. Let it be. We don't say that because he's dead. I mean, not here. <laughs> right, he's at the beach. He's at Ocean City, Maryland. He's not dead. Close enough. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Can we talk about Stranger Things? We can talk about it if you want. I don't have it written down, but you not guys really. still have I mean, it. I mean, I love, I love the first two uh, seasons. But I don't know why they didn't. Kind of lost me on the second one. Yeah, I mean, to the point where like I don't understand why they even made a three. It's so hard, and especially since I was listening to Kevin Smith's podcast, they were talking about Jessica Jones' problem because season one on Jessica Jones was so fucking amazing. Season two wasn't as good as it could have been, that's but it was still me. better than all the other Se series season two. And that, that's that's why. And it, season three, it still kind of lost me because it didn't. Ugh, it it's, was. It's I'm hard. Content with how it ended. If you have a first season that's really good and the second season is decent then no one should complain. Especially because that second season, like you said, is better than all the other second seasons of the other shows. And it, it, it you know, people complain. Just the same thing with the, uh, what's it fucking called? The, the show just ended, Game of Thrones. I hated it. Oh, we hated the ending, but it was like, the ending was still better than any other show you watch. It just wasn't good enough for that show. Yeah. I have an in interjection right here from Amy. She has the phonetical spelling. Aorzia. Kazuntai. <laughs> that actually sounds like an anal procedure. <laughs> Dude, is that a Dude, anal procedure? I I really I got the I got the, I talked to the doctor. He said I gotta get my aorzia worked on. He so said it was leaking. To, so we're gonna have to get the donut again. Yeah. Don't sit on the couch. <laughs> we'll get you some plastic to sit on or something. <laughs> so that's coming. And uh, here we see last week we had you and your fucking one. Go to the video. <laughs> God, you're so obsessed with him. He ends out every single podcast we have with Connor saying one punch. But last week we talked about the mobile game. This one's coming to PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. One Punch Man, a hero nobody knows. A 3v3 fighting game. Just like Jump Force and 3v3. The, yeah, you have your character and two other characters Dragon, on your Dragon roster. Yeah, Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Jump Force is like it. Uh, Naruto, uh, Ultimate Shonen Jump, uh, Ultimate Ninja, uh, yeah, Ultimate Ninja Storm Four, just like that. You got Genos, you got uh, Hellish Blizzard, Speed of Sound, Sonic, Moonman Rider. Look at this, all player with no release date. Look at this. I love how I'm watching this, and I'm I'm loving how they're all fighting and they're I'm all busy. like beating the shit out of each other. 
He just kind of stands yeah. there. Like, like, he, like everyone hits him and he just does it. Dude. Well, that's yeah, that's one punch. That's why I told you he is. So like. So you just pick one punch, you Listen, win. I did Hit some, the guy once and they're all dead. I did like, some research. People say that he is the most boring no. hero because he kills everybody in one fucking punch. If he doesn't, I did some, if he actually put his all into it. I did some research. We'll I did some me. research about power levels. Yes. Him versus Goku because everyone wants to know who would win. That's, That's completely argument. subjective, but go ahead. Yes. It, it, it's We're not, all about subjectivity, man. He is true. fast. He can go from the moon to the earth in two seconds. One punch. Yeah. yeah. However, he's not. You're not saying it right, though. What? Wapa! Oh my God! I had to. <sighs> You're welcome, okay. Connor. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I know. So I was doing research on power levels and and, the, yes. and and him versus him. Yes, and I think I think somewhere in the middle mm -hmm. of where Goku was, mm -hmm. One Punch Man would destroy him easily, but. At the end, when Go when Goku has, as far as he's progressed, mm -hmm. his power level is actually way higher than him. Hmm. Um, I would like to see your analytics on this. I will. I will math. show. I, after I would this, love to. I would I love will. to see your math. We're gonna break I'm it gonna, down. No, we're gonna one. get break out the break down. SPSS, it's Somebody who no, do it. We can do, do a break. Level. We can do a breakdown series if you want to help this <laughs> breakdown. Next podcast, we'll do breakdown. One Punch Man versus Goku. We'll get down to the fucking bottom of this because I'm telling you. I love One Punch Man, and I love Goku, but I gotta tell you, One Punch Man is right. really OP. Team Goku, Team One Punch. One Punch Man! So, that was weak. It was weak, and I'm just ignoring it because One Punch is stronger than Goku, so we're all gonna find out, <laughs> apparently. We got a new breakdown. We're gonna inter interject in the female breakdown series, Goku's and we're gonna come back to that later. We'll do that. Because... No, listen. What's going to be more entertaining? One guy getting that one. You didn't watch all of One Punch away, Man, though. Or you a big you're, massive You're not up to date on I One do, Punch I'm Man. If you're up to date on One Punch Man, he does get a little bit more lively. He's not just a dead fish. As long as it's better than that show, bizarre-ass show you were, anime you were watching the other day? Oh, my the God. The uh, I don't know about that. Board. No, I was watching Kagiri, which on Netflix, that's the gambling uh, yeah. high school. Oh, so yeah. I was watching that one, and... They get fucking weird to where he walked on in on this episode uh, that it was a pretty much a guillotine for your finger, and they were betting on who would pull their finger out first. Like the person that pulled their finger out would lose, <coughs> and it was just a really a it, it was it's a great anime if you're into anime. They got a, that they got a thing about anymore. like snot and sweat and like. All bodily fluids, we'll just put it at that, because there was one character that got off on gambling, there was another one that got off on almost dying, and they were going off on, on a person who was just, it was a crazy episode. Do you, but, know, do you know what ties into this, like, little conversation we've had mm -hmm. so much, is the fact that you did One Punch Man and the next, and the next story. That's very true. The next story is <laughs> Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. Now, who not is? only. Yes, he's, the, uh, he's Goku. Yeah. No, well, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, okay, Kakarot's Goku, but Akiri Toriyami has given his seal of approval on Dragon Ball Z RPG game coming here, and hmm. essentially this action RPG not, is not only bringing the DCB universe to life, but also the backstories that are not in the manga. Now, no word on what the backstories are that are being released, but... You're getting an ink, and he doesn't want you to think that this is just filler, because he said filler can be entertainment yeah. too. To where, especially if you're into this game, it's you're looking for a more in-depth look at Goku. And Goku, throughout a lot of DBZ, is pretty much fucking useless. He just comes in at the last moment after all of his friends got the fuck beat out of him. It's like if you guys were getting shit stomped right now. And I just came in right before you died and said, boom, boom. Oh, man, you guys okay? <laughs> <laughs> He's the worst goddamn friend ever. <laughs> That's not necessarily true. And the worst father. <laughs> um, you can't argue with that one. No. You're just going to leave no, your baby for not, like five years and go train? <laughs> not in the It's cell. okay. I'm going to train. Hey, Jason, I'll be back. You didn't need Cell games. Cell games. <laughs> he was the first to fight Cell. And, well, and that's a lie, too, because he was actually in the chamber. Oh, I can't beat you. So, Here, my 12-year-old son. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Great parenting. 
No. I'm okay. going to let this alien Those creature that was missing built this in a lab fight my 12-year-old son because <laughs> I think he got stuck. And who won? Not the point. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who's the strongest out of all of them? Not anymore. I guess he's a little pussy paper with because bitch. his mom <laughs> made him fucking study instead of fucking. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Always train, kids. Always train. Goku would want you to train. Not like that's those five out. years are crucial to child development or it's anything. It's coming early 2020. If it was One Punch Man, he would have taken care of his son. <laughs> and then he would have punched him once, and that would be it. It would have been done. Uh... It would have been done in one punch. See? <laughs> Quick, efficient, effective. <laughs> We're getting stuff done here, baby. <laughs> You're seeing Kakarot come early 2020 at the PS4 and Xbox. So that looks, it looks pretty cool. It does look great, and it's mm -hmm. an action RPG, so it's going to look really great. This next one, I used to play the fuck out of this one. Oh, oh, yeah. yes. Age of Mythology. Oh, man. I love this it game. It may be coming, in, coming back. Microsoft Studios, who Don't devoted the Age of Empires series, uh, they're currently working on a definitive edition, which is remastered, of Age of Empires 2 II and 3, while Relic Entertainment is busy working on Age of Empires 4. So, where does this come in to the actual spinoff of uh, Age of Mythology? Uh, essentially, it's the same studio here, because they were both, both uh, made by Microsoft. They're focusing in on Age of Empires right now because Age of Empires was a great series, but Age of Mythology was a little bit more convoluted. You can suspend your disbelief and have all of the different... Uh, we're not looking at asses. Keep going up. You can keep that on your private life. But <clears throat> Age of Mythology coming out. So, Mike, while they're still working on that, Eurogamer spoke with... Uh, Age of uh, Age of Empires creative director Adam Eisgreen at E3, and he hinted that after the definitive editions are complete, they may be returning to the Age of Mythology franchise. Being as how he says, that I love Age of Mythology. We're not going to leave it behind. We're going to keep going forward with that. So it is not dead yet. A lot like Deadpool. Too. That was another game that me and Elise, my wife, played when we were dating. Mm. We played this together. It it's a fun. good game. It was. It was fun. Yeah. You had all. You had shit. all three mythologies there. You had the Norse, the, you know, well, yep. Roman, Greek, and then you had the Egyptian. It was a fantastic fucking game. Yeah. The next game, that was fun too. A lot of people are very happy about. Alan Wake. We had just talked about this, didn't we? Yeah, Mr. Flashlight. Yeah, the Fla Mr. Flashlight. Well, essentially, Remedy Entertainment is the developer. Uh, responsible for Alan Wake, and they now have the publishing rights. So while the rights were previously held by Nintendo, the rights, that's not quite all of what they got. It was actually just a minor fraction of a tagline at the bottom of what all this was, because what they really got was <coughs> the devs were, uh, the, the, and there, there's no new game coming out of this either. What? This is the most important part for these people. Not even the rights, not the game. They got 2.5 million euros in royalties for the past games as a one-time income due by the second half of 2019. So they're getting 2.5 million euros. They don't need to announce anything. They're just going to start making another fucking game with the 2.5 million euros they're getting out of this fucking you know, legal thing. So, Well, let's see how that goes. Maybe a new Alan Wake coming in the future, man. And that's, I don't know, I don't even, I'm not. 2.5 million dollars doesn't go quite as well, that's far euros. as you might think. Euros. Right, euros is stronger than a dollar. Whatever. Still. So that's a little bit more. Still 2.5 million in the next game. Let's see how far you get. Yes. We're getting into the rumor mill territory on this one. So. That first game was not bad. Bully 2. Yeah. Electric Boogaloo. Actually, it's not titled Electric Boogaloo, I lied. But. It is a rumor that it is in development at Rockstar. Now, according to a Reddit user, Jimmy Hopkins will be back in the sequel. Instead of his boarding school life, he'll be a college freshman. It only took him 20 years to get to him. Yeah. Now, the previous actor, <laughs> Jerry Rosenthal, said back in March that Rockstar hasn't contacted him. So... That's not to say, one, he's not lying. Two, that they just went with somebody else because he's an older character for the game. They could be. For a different voice. So, 
it's not to say that it's not happening because I really do want another bully series because the first one was absolutely great. Oh Especially yeah, it was taking fantastic. Him, taking him into you know into college and getting a different you know a whole different open world there for Rockstar besides you know Grand Theft Auto and Cowboys. Mm -hmm. It'd be something different. They have been known to push the limits every now and again. It's very true because then you can have like frat parties. And, you know, Jimmy Hopkins getting fucking drunk doing a kegger for the first time. On coffee. Getting roofied. <laughs> I don't know, the Bill Cosby edition. Would you like a cappuccino? <laughs> With some jello jiggling. Hey, I got the jello shots. Why don't you go ahead and take a couple? Here you go. Like, all right, Cosby, calm down. Cosby's cocktail. So this one is where we get into the real kind of uh, rumory stuff. Because I got the next article is disproving this, but apparently another redditor has a major uh, GTA 6 leak, and keep on going down here. Essentially, in the article, it says that uh, the rumor surfaced on Reddit claiming that the next the title is only coming to the next gen series, i.e., the Xbox Scarlet and the PlayStation 5 consoles. Now, said to be set in Vice City, it is also rumored to go to. Uh, Liberty City, as well as Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, and possibly Cuba as a potential spot. How did you go to all those places? It was codenamed Project Americas, and Red Dead 2 already came out, so they are linking that to this one. So, it's kind of, it's still and very, Cuba. very yeah. rumory. But, I like what they say down here, because if you keep going, you'll see a list. There we go, keep going down here. One protagonist, uh, the structured into chapters, weather like hurricanes and floods are going to be a heavy focus. Buildings and vehicles will change over eras because they're saying they're going to go from like the 70s to 80s and 90s and that kind of a thing. So maybe going back to that. Um, as long as they give us like an this, actual the show game get, and not like... They're focusing more heavily on it like a Narcos being as, you know, going down into that. So if, I would love If this. it go, tracks a character over like decades and each city is like a decade of their life that could be good. I don't want it to just be Scarface remastered though yeah that is because we already not, got that game that, that is was Scarface. what the first one was that so, was Scarface my exactly buddy, what my it was. buddy just put something on uh, he, he just he just uh, is a new fan of ours and he just put something I saw on his Facebook where he said uh, Grand Theft Auto 5 has the best game soundtrack of it, uh, in any game yeah I would believe that because they had a lot of big hits on that one as well. They had a massive mm -hmm. amount of library for their uh, for their just their content, and they kept expanding that too. Whenever they would do updates on, yeah, you, you would get new music. So yeah, I believe that, and I, I believe they're gonna get have something really special for GTA Six. Um, obviously, you know Fidel Castro. They're saying will appear HIV and immigration crisis at the time to be touched on. So there's mm. a lot of different things that GTA can spoof so on and have get fun with. HIT in the game or HIV in the game. You can get HIT. You can get hit Doesn't whenever the fuck you want. You just gotta go up and push. They're, yeah, they're probably just get gonna it. touch on it. Like it's, if they're gonna, uh, if you're gonna do like the 80s and 90s. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah. It was heavily prevalent in the 80s. Huge. Like, and that's my favorite part. It's like if you run into it, somebody Getting HIV. No. Oh, oh, oh. If you just like ran into somebody, I'm just like, oh shit. I didn't mean to do that. They just turn around and just start fucking trying to fight you. Oh, they're like, just fucking dude. mollywog. Like, yeah. Jesus Christ, can't we just My talk? bad, bro. Can't you talk about this first? Like, <laughs> sorry. Fuck you. <laughs> like, yo, man, calm down. Yeah. Like the old days, the like, hey, come here. They do try and kill you over anything. Corey and Terry and the cops. Oh my god. <laughs> You bump into a cop car. Bam, 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 like, dick, I can have it. Oh, it was an accident. You can have my insurance. You don't have to shoot. <laughs> oh, stop. Officer, they're called accidents for a reason. <laughs> and that was a cool thing in five because you could surrender to the cops. Yeah. You yeah. That, back. that was a big thing. Because you could do that. I think at three you could do that. You just and stand still and you could yeah. Okay, I give up. And then eventually, was, no, you. he's resisting. I'll take the minor up, part Terry? of the fine. From the <laughs> hookers. Um, from Teddy and Terry's Ultimate Clash Wrestling Podcast. Terry's listening again. Um, their YouTube video is going to hit tomorrow. Nice. Or Wednesday. I can't remember when I scheduled it. It's coming out soon. <laughs> but um, check them out every Thursday on Facebook. We're uh, up to date, getting up to date on their podcast. So check them out. Next story here. 
Uh, did we talk about this one? Oh, God, yeah. Apparently it's fake. All the GTA shit we were just talking about. Whoa, whoa, whoa. They're not going to have dragons? We'll visit Vice City again, apparently, in South America. Apparently, we'll visit Cuba. That's where all the dragons come from. South America, right? Apparently, <laughs> it's <laughs> bogus. Damn Nonsense. It. Jack O' Lantern 1982. No, because Jack O' Lantern 1982. Apparently, it's like me when I'm editing, I start noticing all the key words that I keep saying. <laughs> and then I'm just yelling at the screen, Shut the fuck up! <laughs> No, every time I hear the word apparently now I think Bad. I think it was a video that looks like a kid that's doing the uh, the news article. Yeah. Apparently I've never been on live TV before. <laughs> Scared me oh. half to death. So apparently this guy knew people who worked at PC Gamer and Kotaku and the leak was followed by one uh, followed up by another, this time GFK fifty three, who apparently <laughs> has an Inside source with some details that are something different. Weather being a, a huge play, uh, a, a huge factor. Category four or five hurricanes. Essentially, that would really fuck up your crime drama. You're trying to fucking rob a bank, and all of a sudden, a category four hurricane comes through and fucks your day up. Yeah, that would It'd be a little bit inconvenient. So we don't essentially, well, essentially to... is the word I always say. But essentially, we don't know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> essentially. Apparently, essentially, we don't know anything. Nope, never have, never did. But the next story, we did. Well, I did I learn a little something story. about this one. See, I I knew about his tariffs, but I didn't know they affected gaming. Yeah, man. Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo are speaking out on Trump's tariffs. They are really against this because it's going to affect the game industry and well, especially obviously. console gaming. Now. According to a joint letter from the companies to the U.S. Trade Representative, a newly proposed tariff on goods from China would hurt consumers, put jobs at risk, and stifle innovation. Trump proposed a $300 billion in tax tariffs uh, to on foreign goods, 25% tariff on video game consoles, which could cost consumers an additional $840 million than normal. So nationwide, 25% hike on the console. Like we we did touch on this a little bit before, but now all three of these so major game companies are saying, hey, we got a problem. We're going to fuck shit up here. Stop it. So the trade talks are still in. <laughs> trade talks are still going on. How serious are they? Stop it. <laughs> was, it like, was it like a, you know, like, I'm counting to three. One. <laughs> Two, don't let me get two don't. and a half. <laughs> yeah. Two now and three quarters. quarters. How serious are we here? Are we We're at two and three quarters? Two and three quarters? <laughs> oh, shit. Whew, that's like DEF CON 1 right there. Yeah. Two and five sixteenths. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. But according uh, to this letter, the newly proposed tariff could be of huge hike on it. Now, here's the problem. 96% of video game consoles are imported to the U.S., manufactured in China. 96 fucking percent. China's where some of the best shit's made. It's true. So, yeah, that's going to jack shit up, man. You want to pay $800 for a PS5? Fuck no. Specifically, no. I'll wait for that shit to go on sale for 400 in 20 years. <laughs> So, I mean, the game companies just try to make their voice out there heard, man, uh, so that the tariffs, we can avoid this. Because they're still in talks. They're still trying to work shit out. I don't, I don't think we're going to avoid it. No. Nope. We're probably going to pay out the news. Like, I don't pay attention a lot to news. He seems to be very stubborn. We're about to get fucked. So, uh, the next story. The Master Race. No, not us, but mm -mm. the rest of y'all. A lot more people maybe come to the Master Race. A lot of people in China are becoming Master Racers as well. Dang. But the next story... Um, master Races for any race. It's all about hope. Marvel's Avengers... We love hope here. They're really swinging, doing a Babe Ruth swing for the fences here. Um, with... They have aspirations... Oh, <coughs> of being <coughs> as good a game as PlayStation 4 Spider-Man by Insomniac. Now here's the I problem. I really doubt I that. You can make the characters. I don't know. 
Well, at least you know the is. graphics are going to be decent. Usually Square Enix is like decent. Square graphics. Enix does have great graphics. I mean, yes, we have a problem with the way that the human characters are. All right? Yes. Thor <laughs> looks like Ed from Accounting. It's why we titled it a podcast. <laughs> Uh, Captain America ever doesn't look bad with his cap on, with his you know little face thing on. He doesn't look bad. If you Iron close Man. your eyes, they look they, they look just like him. Yeah, well, I, <laughs> well that's pretty cool though. I mean, I'm looking at this. They're looking at a big story. They're looking at uh, trying to make it a huge game, its own universe. So when you're trying to make your own universe and you've already been tainted by an amazing Marvel Cinematic <laughs> Universe. People are not going to be happy with it, but you got to give it time to prove itself, especially with how they're going with this story and how it's not just, yep, heroes always win, heroes always win. You see right here. The fire Wherever would you find a picture story. of Robert Downey Jr. to make him look Hold like on. him? So he looks nothing like him, like in the use of the movies, but exactly like him. <laughs> yeah, they get the Hulk. There's the Hulk you get on. right, but everybody else? But Maybe not the Iron Man suit. Yes. You don't know if Ed from Accounting turns into Big Lebowski Thor, though. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm fairly certain. You never know. But I don't think I'm gonna future, you're going to be able to play as Ed from Accounting and Iron Guy. You know, I mean, yeah, it kind of looks like it looks kind like similar to similar. Iron but Phillip? I think that it could be good with great gameplay comes great responsibility. Fucking kicked him off the. Yeah, they don't care. But <laughs> what I'm saying is it's in the like still in like all the comic universe. So you have a lot more properties than you do with like an actual movie. So if you give it some time and actually give it a chance, if I you make the good. characters look exactly like the comic book, then I'll give you a pass. He could but look like Ed from Accounting. They do look if Ed similar. from Accounting looks exact, you My take a frame is, of Iron Man. And you take a frame of that guy, and it looks and one yes, to one. And yes, they look similar. That's that's the yeah, head from a cow and looks what we, very much like Thor. That's what we compared to when we originally did this story. They had the silence with the comics. This link looks very much like and the actual. This link. is another thing. Yeah, they both Cap have, Captain of, or um, Iron two. Man in, in that scene they just showed there mm -hmm. looks like in this scene coming up right here. Right there, that's right here. Uh, it looks like the Sub Zero from uh, yeah. Mortal Kombat X. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> but you have to, you have to suspend your dis disbelief in the fact that that's never going to be Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. is never going to be an Iron Man again. So but yes, he Robert is going Downey to taint Jr. exactly why it's going to taint your view of anything they do after that. But we really it's like a Robert different Downey Jr. universe. Is my but point. Not so if you have to suspend this. He may be in it if, the, if 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 we all sign the petition. No. Let's get a petition. No. Let's get a petition started. Link, he, he's already signed on. He's Just already like the real in. Link. He also has pointy ears. So exactly. Exactly like it. Exactly like it. Yep. Little pointy ears. The next story, they're mm -hmm. still feeling the burn. Yeah. Bernie Sanders is hopping on Twitch, man. Now he's not gonna be playing really? Fortnite or you what know. What is he gonna play? He's not playing Fortnite or GTA. <laughs> Politics simulator. He's <laughs> <laughs> democracy simulator. Euro truck simulator. <laughs> Come on now. But it's actually not a bad game. Though. But no, he truck. he. He's not going to be gaming. The Vermont Senator Sanders appeals to young voters, so he sees this as a way to get out to them. And that he labeled it as just chatting. Sanders <coughs> is using the Twitch channel for live political content with Bernie and the team discussing news and the campaign. And I think on the it trail. would be more entertaining if he was playing some form of video no, game. No, he's not going to do that. He's just doing this. Getting Twitch to get the younger crowd. Even the younger if crowd. Yeah. while he's talking politics, he was playing a game. Is just Bernie playing Fortnite? Yeah. Oh my God! Look, oh, I just killed this guy. Yeah, that's really not gonna increase <laughs> he did. your political he did. aspect. There. <laughs> oh look, I'm teabagging him. No, Bernie. No. <laughs> God damn it, Bernie. No teabagging, Bernie. Title of the podcast. <laughs> there you go. I think you're trying to let it go. <laughs> Don't tell me that wouldn't be awesome there. <laughs> it would be yeah. awesome. I'm not saying I don't want to watch Bernie Sanders play games, 
This would be fantastic. <laughs> Who wouldn't? Who wouldn't want to watch this man play games? <laughs> Keep scrolling, man. They got better ones here too. This is uh, Bernie Sanders playing some, you know, some God <laughs> there, like. like a Japanese hentai dating hey, sim. some hentai, huh? Some Dark Souls? Yeah. <laughs> see Bernie play some Dark Souls or fucking, you know, Bloodborne, I man? <laughs> oh, man. Overwatch. <laughs> and Minecraft. Minecraft in it up! A field to burn 2020. You guys had bands on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. And of course, of course I... Japanese games. It's right. not all head time. But feeling the burn, man. I think that's Bernie hilarious. Sanders is doing something different because that's how some dumb fuck got elected president is he did something different. And he was, you know, ultra wealthy and ultra famous. And yeah, his dad did set him up pretty well. Um, <laughs> just had to submit a dispute for some of the video used. Okay. Someone claimed they owned it. Ever. So we'll find out about that later. Um, More to come in the coming weeks. I mean, it's all if on. If we a, remember, it's all on a web article. I know a little bit about this game. I don't here. know who the fuck owns it. This next story, Eve, man, they're in chaos. This is where Eve is where all the adult jackasses live on the internet. Now, they're Reddit. This is what they play. All the player-run empires are scrambling to defend their uh, their home bases here. This is the type after of an alien here. invasion. <laughs> Called the Drifters. Oh yeah, they've been around for a while. I think so. Wednesday afternoon, thousands of players across the lawless region of Null Sex Space were playing. Uh, That's player owned space. Yeah, we were player uh, players create empires and battle for supremacy, but no. they were Wait, these. These are the same oh, battles that they regularly. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, These, this is the article you sent me. I used it in the news. It's crazy, right? These are the battles that regularly get reported as hundreds of thousands of millions of dollars. Cause yeah. Because Eve blue. uses a currency called Plex. Yeah. Plex? No. I didn't write it down, but it is in here. Whatever yeah. they call it. Uh, Plex can be traded to their currency of ISK. ISK, yeah. ISK. Yeah, it was the ISK. ISK, uh, you might get ISK by trading Plex, which is pilot license something or another mm -hmm. it's in here somewhere i did see that well, it, yeah, it's not going. Uh, but I, I played it long enough i can <coughs> essentially the uh yeah you can there you go isk um yeah, yeah. isk can be traded to but, Austin, but Pilots, most people don't isk. actually spend the real so this guy was just it. traveling through this place the drifters easily fucked him up and oh, he yeah. lost 150 dollars in cargo on his ship y yeah but he didn't actually spend one hundred and fifty dollars. He collected. In his he collected that yeah. much. Yes. He put the the unless he was game the dumb time fight. energy in to, and then they you can calculate the value. Yeah. It's really kind of just clickbait. Well, so, Doug, Doug Miller. So that's what I actually kind of thought. Where uh, before I started playing No Man's Sky, mm -hmm. where that was gonna go. Yeah. Like I thought the game would have been so much cooler. Like. But then again, they say it, it would take you like nine million years to complete the whole game, uh, to visit every single thing. Yeah. But um, I, I always thought when I was playing that game, game, I was like, all right, well, it'd be so cool if they made this more multiplayer where you actually could build bases and shit, and then people would clan up and fucking destroy yeah. other people's planets. Yeah. Like this is my planet, and then yeah. fucking people would come with like clans would come in and start fighting over some that resources would be awesome. on the planet. That would be awesome. Uh, be a bitch if you were a completionist and you just stumbled into that game, and you're just like, oh. Well, I have to do everything. <laughs> Sit down, Junior. See, that's my problem. <laughs> that's, gonna take like, that, that, that's my problem is I'm trying to go that route and like try to do everything. I and have I, to see I got, like, every nine rock. Yeah. I have to look under every <laughs> surface. Everything must. Be I have locked. to get every creature. Yeah. Some planets you won't be there a while, <laughs> especially those toxic planets with millions of like. Mm. Yeah. So I just thought it'd be cool. It'd be fun. It'd be fun if like. Oh, what? You got, a, you got a clan full of like six people, and all they did is wanted to just go around and fucking rule the universe, so they would just destroy other people's planets and take their resources. Oh yeah, I think you know that'd be cool people. shit. It'd be like a real life fucking yeah. alien invasion game. That would be pretty awesome. You'd, to get that, they'd probably have to make it. Tyler Coleman, your game dev, invent that. 
Call yeah. me. Do it. Yeah, Call me up. Game devs. I got ideas. I got drawings. Just whip it up. Just whip it no, up. No, I got drawings. I got, I got help. Yeah. Just make it. We've announced it. We expect it released in a couple, in about a month. So Go some of it. the biggest fractions <laughs> were, uh, factions were actually in, in, in affected by this. The Imperium and Test Alliances lost big. <laughs> they were one of the times that got hit first. And yeah. Because apparently there's like a thing where you can set it up for auto attacking any player character, but there wasn't an auto attack for a non player character. Auto so, attack for bases? Like the bases, yeah. Yeah. So there was no auto attack. It's not a player attack. The, the bases. Base. So they would just focus in on the shields and just fuck them up. And then the bases for Imperium and uh, Test Alliances got demolished. Well, they don't destroy the bases. Your stuff doesn't really get destroyed. It just moves it to another base. It takes. They don't actually destroy the whole base. I suppose you can. But a lot of people losing out in the chaos here. I do know of people who dropped an egg recently, <laughs> or quite a while ago. Oh, I have an egg. Not that type of egg. It's a, it. That's a. That's a. <laughs> oh God. That's um, an. Uh, that's that's a, a Eve egg. reference. If you play, you know. That's a Game of Thrones reference. About five years ago. <laughs> so, yeah, Eve Online is on fire. And it was always burning since the world's been turning. So, essentially, we start off, we stop off this podcast. We end off with a segment we did last uh, week was Breakdown. This week, I did not have that kind of time. But I did uh, think of a different thing. We kind of mentioned briefly in the podcast uh, that we were, wanted to... Uh, what superpowers we would want. I'm going off another spinoff of this one. What if you were a superhero? Do you have powers? Do you not? What is your origin story? Who's your arch you're not really, villain? You're not really a superhero if you don't have powers. Batman. All right. <laughs> um, the power of billions of dollars. Yes. Super money man. Tony Stark? Super? Robert Downey Jr.? No, Come but on. he's got to live he's off of... He's a super he, genius. He fixed that, and he didn't need it. He also admitted that in the movies and the comics. <laughs> but yeah, that's he what does I'm have a power of being a super genius. Black Widow. Black Widow doesn't have powers. You could just she punish is. her. You could she just be a psychopath power. who loves murdering and is good at it. He has the. She has the power of being super hot. Yeah, she is pretty hot. Agreed there. But <laughs> okay, that she is wins. the and what if ends. of this week. What if you were a superhero? Uh, don't start with me. I have what Obviously, I want to do. I already know. I'm the map man. But I already thought my powers are to control the elements. You would be Storm. Essentially like a male Storm, but more like I can control the elements and shape them to my will. However, so you're more like... like uh, I feel like I have a doctor, man. I feel like Aang. Yeah, I'd want to be like Aang, man. Just control the fucking shit up. Using lightning and fire and wind and... Uh, all all that shit. Blood I, bending. Thought, I thought when I you could said literally, elements. with controlling blood, be able to make you stand up and walk out of this. All right, so you're not down. talking just about. I might not actually. You're talking about actual elements. I might actually. You'd be table of elements, man. But you know, anti-hero rather. But that's not the point. Yeah. I might abuse this power. Like I said, you'd be like, you'd be like Doctor Manhattan. You'd definitely abuse the power. I would. <laughs> oh, 100 percent. Yeah, I'd fuck. I'm kind of going on the same level. But this is my superhero origin story. I'm, I'm kind of going on the same level because I would be. Um, a shapeshifter. Um, I would be able to shapeshift into anything, like this little guy right here. I'd, I'd just shapeshift to him, and listen to conversations. <laughs> just kind of walk away. Walk. A shapeshifter would be kind of cool. Yeah. That'd be an interesting power. Yeah. And uh, how did I how did I get to be a shapeshifter? Um, I'm going with uh, you know what? Let's go with the, the genetic modification some kind of uh, initial genetic you know modification trial that just ends up going wrong and I just end up completely having mastery of all the elements hmm. I'm a test subject I signed up on uh, I don't know uh, we'll say indeed I got the adult Craigslist I show up hey you're gonna be this test subject here's a hundred dollars cool bro sit down here shoot me up with some shit all of a sudden Elemental powers. I was eating some bad chicken, mm. and uh, it's a bitch. <laughs> Gotta check the expiration date on that chicken in there too, yeah. by the way. <laughs> some bad chicken, and I, uh, and most people get food poisoning. 
Yeah, well, <laughs> I have this fear of, of throwing up, and it's a real thing, actually. Um, it, it happens. You don't no, have to I've, I've literally it, been. It'll I've been. I've literally done it twice since I was seven years old. Because I will. I'd rather feel sick for six days straight than know I'll feel better and just get out. Anyway. Let's so, fix that. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so what happened is I ate some bad Three chicken. Times. I ate some bad chicken. Instead of getting rid of that, I kept it in me, which mutated it into something else. I, I just made that. Must have been a radioactive food chicken. It's, well, <laughs> it oh. mutated into food poison. <laughs> really bad. I almost died. So my body just decided, fuck this. We're going to change it into whatever we want. It changed, it changed the chicken that was in me into something else. So now you're controlled by a barbecued chicken. Yes. And my and it bends and your my, cells and to my, whatever it and wants. And my arch nemesis is a giant chicken. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Or is it the egg? Which one came first? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously my arch nemesis would probably be some kind of a black hole or vacuum man, somebody who could just kind of suck <laughs> everything out of there, you know? <laughs> Kind yeah, of hard to water bend when he's just like. Elements are still. Yeah, every element still has some kind of matter in it, and uh, black hole will suck the matter out. Like an anti matter man. And it'll come right out the mouth. God damn it. <laughs> shit. Really. Gotta tag your mom's house into this just because it's coming out the mouth. <laughs> Shitty. Shit dick. Spaghetti shit, shit dick. <laughs> Spaghetti <laughs> shit dick. Podcasting. No, we're steering away from Richard. <laughs> <laughs> so, superpower. I don't know. I Would you go crazy? crazy? I could grow beard, man. <laughs> I already got that. It'll be back in a week or so. <laughs> be like, um, be like, um, uh, like uh, yeah, I changed it. You know who would be a like badass? The, the I Super Bear Grills, to where he'd be like Medusa, to where he could just, his beard hair would just kind of elongate <laughs> and control shit. I think I want to change it to Santa Claus. Santa Claus is He's bad. He's not a superhero. Or a, well, well, I guess you could say he that's could a be. Power. The motherfucker goes around the world in one night. Okay. So does the Flash. So super or er, Superman. Uh, he can do it too. He's got tons of money. He has Batman. fucking. I know, but I'm saying. And Batman has the wealth Santa to go around the world in the day. Santa Claus also has tons of people working for him. So does the Hand. I know this. <laughs> I'm just saying. The hand of the king? He's magic. Hand He's Marvel. magical. Yeah. Iron fist. He, yeah, no, yeah. He's got an army of slaves. No, I'm still sticking to uh, shapeshifting. That's pretty cool. Deformed <laughs> short people. I'd have to go with, like, super genius sort of powers. Mm. Aren't you so already like, a genius? What? Aren't you already a genius? No, no I'm far from <laughs> No, he just knows how to Excuse read. You. <laughs> yeah, I just know how to read. But... Super genius because you have Reed Richards. You have uh, so I could like you know be a super genius, manipulate the stock market, and spend my life playing. See, with the super never genius, having to work. How would you become a super genius though? What is your origin story? Would you can't just have a it have to be something stupid? Brain. I don't know. Um, you already picked bad chicken. <laughs> Damn, subject, I was gonna go with bad so, chicken, uh, but Kelly already uh, had it. Uh, uh, radi radiation? Uh, yeah. Uh, radiation. Gamma radiation? Yeah, yeah, radiation. sure. Why not? That's Or cool. cosmic rays. Cosmic yeah, rays. Yeah, yeah. Rays in the, in the or, what sounds like more bullshit? Or, pluto or uh, plutonium. Cosmic spaghetti. Yeah. You ate bad cosmic spaghetti, but instead of <laughs> shitting it out, it, came out, it yeah. actually <laughs> called you to come out of your mouth. And then ever since then, you've just been super fucking smart. Yeah. You still Listen come out of your mouth. Real, that's, the, the, <laughs> that's, the, yeah, that's the downside. <laughs> uh, wow, as, you're as super you're, smart. You, you have know. everything. You, you have all the world. And everything. What's the downside? I come out of my mouth. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Did you just say you come out of your mouth? No, oh, that's yeah. crazy. Uh, what are like, you talking oh my about? god. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> Listen to the extras. Oh, God. Find out what God damn you, your mom's about. house. Anyway, <laughs> he's a big fan. For those of you at home, your mom's house does this thing. Would you rather? Yeah. So before the podcast, I proposed: Would you rather shit out your dick or come out your mouth? We're saying what show. they would rather. We well, I think we all know what they would rather. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Or yeah. It, no. Yeah, we're not going to discuss it. No. 
Separate podcast. Yeah. Separate Watch your podcast. mom's house to get But uh, arch nemesis for your super genius. Would it be like Cletus from Ohio who's just like really dumb but super strong? Hi, 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 hi. Probably the regulatory hey, commission of whoever regulates your stock market. Come <laughs> back here. You were super smart, but you didn't pay your taxes. The IRS <laughs> is here to audit you. <laughs> God damn it! Oh! White collar criminals! <laughs> <laughs> and I am IRS man. And I, am <laughs> I am IRS man. And I am auditing you. I have the power to audit <laughs> anything and everything. Do you own that dog? I've always wanted to be an IRS agent, and that's my origin story. Do you belong here? I'm going to audit you. Oh, right, I can't get out of here. Hey, you get right. out of here, man. Everyone's scared of the auditors. No auditing here. <laughs> no auditing allowed. So, uh, obviously, we do have a lot going on here you see on the YouTube behind us uh, Ultra, Ultra Class Wrestling Podcast with Teddy and Terry Booty Teddy and Terry Pancakes. what's up Booty Pancakes video is up on the YouTube as well as the highlight reel for last week's podcast number 44 it all began with a slice of pizza which I didn't I, I do the doing the editing I actually realized I never explained that that's how the creator of Pac-Man came up with Pac, uh, Pac-Man he took a slice of pizza and he was like son of a bitch and it looked like Pac-Man. So, there you go. Okay, you know, I didn't need to hear the story, Beginnings. and I kind of figured that out. Yeah. All on my own. But, uh, we want to go out to the thank yous here. Uh, Mike Hit from the Pit, YYSP, and AM Support, thank you for following. We have 1K Tay, thank you for uh, watching. He liked Podcast 43, Matt Man and Friends, Troy Cast, uh, Podcast 42. That's not Thor, that's Ed from Accounting. <laughs> as well as uh, number 41, spoiler alert, Men in Black. And uh, UGM Satan commented uh, on Podcast 44, it all began with a slice of pizza, a fire emoji, and heavy. Uh, okay. That's some serious stuff. Thank you for commenting. Um, I have no idea what the fuck that means. And always... Fire emoji means that shit's fire and that shit's yeah. hot. I got that. That shit's hot. That and shit's heavy. heavy hot. Heavy hot. Okay. Hot right. heavy. We're heavy. Is that how the kids are It's like Bud Heavy. Yeah, you know, like you got Bud Light and then you got Bud Heavy. Bud Heavy. I have, been, I have not seen that in the stores. I don't, yeah, I don't think I've seen that. It might actually be a beer that gets you drunk. Um, Caitlin Peterson uh, liked uh, Podcast 42. That's not Thor. That's Ed from Accounting. Troy Cast as well. That's uh, it all began with a slice of pizza. And uh, thank you guys all for watching and listening. Poll is out now on Ultra Class Wrestling Podcast, Teddy and Terry. They have a poll up there for what team are you, Team Hyman or Team Bishop? So their poll's out there right now. We're getting a lot of responses out there. I'd like to send out the love to them. Check out Black Opinionated Podcast, Matt Kennedy, Wednesdays, and uh, Joe Palladino, my buddy with Tales from the Morgue. When is episode two coming? He's working on it. He's working on it now. Soon, uh, this weekend, he said he's going to try to get everything together. He got everything over to, uh, to James Anthony Legion, who was in a little band called Motor Gator. Now, in a band called Cultus Black, Thursday, their single, uh, You Make Me Sick, the anti single, is coming out on Thursday. You uh, Make Me Sick. Joe's been doing a lot of stuff with Cultus Black out there, which is a good band. If I don't know anything they did. You ever hear our intro? Any of the podcasts? Any of the YouTubes? That's Cultus Black, man. James Anthony Legion and his buddies did that for us. I got him to do it. And I honestly, I'm going to go to them when I need another one done because those guys are really great, talented musicians. And definitely want to point everybody to their uh, new single coming out. You make me sick. So the new anti single is coming out Thursday. Check it out. We want to thank all of you for listening and watching, as always. Uh, this has been a long, drawn-out goodbye, like I always do. Thank you very much, Walljangers. We will see you next week, as always. <laughs> Game on! Bye-bye, boys and girls. Yeah. Oh, hi. Who is that? Who is that? Who is that?